All right, calculation time. First one, have an ideal freezer with a coefficient of performance of 7.0 in a 24 degrees Celsius room. What is the temperature inside the freezer? So if we're talking about coefficient of performance for a refrigerator or freezer, and we are using the ideal equation, that one is the low temperature divided by the high temperature minus the low temperature. Now be careful, you can't split this guy out easily, right? This is not like having two things in the numerator and one thing in the denominator, so don't make that algebraic mistake. But we can go ahead and plug in some numbers, rearrange things a bit, and solve for TL. Coefficient of performance is given, 7.0. TL is our unknown. TH is 24, and we have to make sure and convert these guys to Kelvins, so plus 273, that whole thing is my TH, minus, uh, not the L on top, go away please, thank you, TL. All right, this looks like fun. So we can multiply this junk over here, and we're gonna have seven, I'm gonna drop the .0 part, uh, times 297, which is what we get when we add those. And then we're gonna have minus seven times TL. So I just went ahead and distributed that seven to both of these things. That equals TL. So I can bring that TL, this minus seven over here, and it's gonna be plus seven. So I'm gonna end up with uh, eight TL equals seven times 297. So TL equals seven times 297 divided by eight. Hey, that wasn't too painful. And throw that puppy in your calculator and you get 259.9 Kelvins. There you go. If you wanna convert that to Celsius, it's a negative 13.1, just in case you were wondering. So nice and chilly freezer there. Okay, one more. Now we've got a heat pump, these wonderful, amazing devices, used to keep a house warm at 24 degrees Celsius. We like our rooms at 24, apparently, tonight. And we want to know the work required to deliver 2,400 joules of heat into the house if the outdoor temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. All right, so now we're dealing with heat pumps. Our equations are a little bit different. Our coefficient of performance in this case uh, in all cases, for heat pumps, it's QH over W. And by all cases, I mean whether or not it's ideal. This is always true. Uh, but in the case that it is ideal, this also equals uh, TH minus TH, not minus, divided by TH minus TL. So what we're going to do here... We don't have the coefficient of performance, but we can solve for it, um, well, by plugging in over here, and then we can set that equal to this, but I'm just gonna forget about that and just use the fact that these two things are equal to each other to solve for the work out of there. So QH, uh, that's the amount of heat we want delivered, so that's the 2400. W is going to be the unknown that I'm solving for. The high temperature is the temperature inside, so 2400. Got to convert that to Kelvins. Not 2400, just 24. Sorry, that would be a little too toasty. Okay, then in the denominator, we've got TH minus TL, which is the 24 degrees again and the 5 degrees. We're going to subtract those, and you can go ahead and convert them to Kelvins, but if you look at that, you've got 24 plus 273 minus 5 plus 273. And that minus basically gets distributed here, so these will actually go away. So whenever you're looking at a temperature difference, and we've seen this before, uh, you can actually ignore the 273 part. So we could have just had 24 minus 5, and we could have called it good. Now we've got this W downstairs, so the kind of shortcut for solving these types of uh, uh, algebraic expressions is to do cross multiply and divide. So W equals 2400 cross multiplied. So I'm going to multiply that by 24 minus 5, which is 19. 
and then I'm going to divide it by 24 plus 273. So that was the same 297 that we saw in the previous problem. And we get a wonderful 153.5 joules, which is pretty amazing. That's all the energy it would take if we had an ideal heat pump to put that much energy of heat into our house. Okay, see you next time.